Okay, Doc, we're struggling with um, the sound. Once we're able um, to fix that, we'll definitely come back to you. Our technicians are working on that. Um, whilst we, um, we, 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 we await um, Dr. Blyden on the line there, let's talk about um, people coming to, to, to help Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. And Sierra Leoneans, um, some Sierra Leoneans are saying, no, we should not use the equipment that people are, are giving us to help in, the, um, in, the, uh, in uh, breaking the chain of transmission because some of them, some of the items are, are, are infected with the virus mm -hmm. already. So, so take us through that concern because we understand that the Chinese government has given us some um, equipment, uh, but Sierra Leoneans are saying, no, it's coming from China where this thing all started. Uh, so it, they are infected. So it reminds me of one, one very, um, you know, we had somebody, somebody who d during the war, said when fighting the war you don't discriminate where your arms come from you know we are a hard struck nation um we get gifts um from both bilateral and multilateral partners in the current situation one of our most um, um enduring bilateral partners has donated ipc equipment yeah infection prevention and control equipment to us i think we are grateful we appreciate them. Um, I understand they are bound to be concerns here and there, but as government, we are very grateful to the Chinese for the support, for the donation of IPC equipment. Um, uh, we, we look forward to receiving some more equipment. We're talking about the whole country, is talking about ventilators and more. Mm. We will be very grateful if we get some ventilators from the Chinese. Or oh, so do we, so do we. We also appreciate same from any other, any other bilateral partner. I mean, this is our cry. As a nation, we are in a difficult situation. Um, we, we welcome any donations, any interventions, any support in cash or kind during this agonizing period. Okay. I, I think Dr. Sylvia Blyden is, um, is fine now with us. Um, hello, Doc. Welcome to the program. Hello, Mr. Wise. Can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Wonderful. Uh, Doc, first off, tell us what's your assessment um, since the, the, the virus broke out on a global stage and Sierra Leone started putting preparations to prevent um, the outbreak in the country. And up till now that we are in the last day of the three-day lockdown declared by the um, government. Tell us what's your assessment in the fight. Well, um, let me take it from the global perspective and from my own personal outlook on this whole uh, global pandemic. Clearly, we had something very worrying emerging in China. But unfortunately, the world assumed it was the same SARS, MARS that limited itself in the Middle East or in China without realizing that there was something very unique about this mm -hmm. Wuhan virus, the, the virus that originated in Wuhan. And so there was a lot of careless steps affecting even the most powerful countries around the world. And that is where you have to commend the government of Sierra Leone. Because initially, I was the one who actually raised the very first alarm on Facebook, because I realized at that time, the country was spending a lot of time discussing weddings, marriages, divorces, Catholic church. And that was the topic. And to me, what was more important was we don't need this distraction right now. Something is coming that is terrible. So I went on Facebook and I raised an, al an alarm on Facebook and I got like 10,000 people coming on board and endorsing that alarm. And I think that was like a wake up call because I realized since that point in February, when I said, I'm not interested in discussing weddings and divorces and Catholic churches, we have something big that is coming. I hope the president is not being distracted. And to his credit, we have to commend the president. Since that point on, he has been very proactive. And he, him and his government, the steps they have put in place in terms of stopping this virus not to come in has been amazing, very commendable, and we have to commend them. But that is as far as commendation goes. Now, after they have been so proactive, they have impressed us so well closing down the borders, stepping up surveillance, massive sensitization. There are, there's one important thing that they are not able to do up till now, and that is to bring the entire 
country on board. What do I mean? Without trying to do any comparison between this government and the last government, it is a fact that when Ebola, which was not known by us, was unexpected, we didn't know anything about it and we were not expecting it. Unlike this one that we know about and we're expecting. For Ebola, we had all the political parties, all the civil society sectors, even some of the most bitter critics of the government of that time, they were brought on board. Because when you're fighting a national war, which is what we are now doing, we're fighting a war against the virus, you need everybody on board. And what do I mean by everybody on board? You need the people to see those who they trust being part of the response. And I would now make an example. In 2014, when President Koromari realized that he needed to bring in the opposition to convince the opposition strongholds that this is not a fight that is a light fight. This is not anything to do with censors, as they were telling them. We need you to believe that this virus is unprecedented, but it exists. He realized his messaging was not going through. He realized that the people whom he should be convincing were not being convinced. So he reached out to someone he knows when that person speaks, his people who believe in him listen to him. And that was no less a person than the current president of Sierra Leone, as God would have it. President Julius Mada Bio came on board that fight to sensitize his people that Ebola is real. And it changed everything for us. Now, tables are turned. He is now the president. And whether he likes it or not, he has to accept that a chunk of Sierra Leoneans, they don't like him. They don't believe in him. They don't trust him. Whatever he says, they would not do it. If he tells them, whilst they are standing, that they should jump, they will sit down. So he has to realize that he should bring on board the rest of the populace who do not like him. And that is where this government is failing seriously. They are leading a divided nation. And if they do not unite this country, we will not be able to convince our people at critical moments in time that we need to be united. That is the first failing so far. The second failing is a lack of medical understanding of what is happening. I am sorry, but you cannot put soldiers and chemists in charge of a medical emergency. <laughs> I mean, I know my, my big brother there, one of my favorite politicians is telling us about management issues, social issues. This is a medical emergency, for God's sake. This is a public health emergency. You don't leave the doctors out. If you are looking for a soldier who is a doctor, we have them. We have Brigadier Safode. We have who, who himself is an expert in virology. Dr. Dr. Blyden, let, let me hold you. Let, let me hold you and ask you this question. I know we definitely, yes. uh, I'm going to ask you about the people we, we, are, we, we should send out there to fight this virus. But going back to the scenario you, you, you created in 2014 when you said when president, um, former president was in power, Ernest Baikroma, he included even the opposition because he realized the fight was not going to be um, won by just the APC, it was a national fight. Can I take you to, for example, we've seen where the opposition leader in parliament, the, um, Honorable Chiono Rabadan Majuba, he has taken the sensitization to his community. We've seen where PPRC has met with all political parties association. They've consented to join the fight and ensure that they, they involve actively in sensitizing their followers. And when you say that you have people who do not believe um, the SLPP and the SLPP is actually driving a divided vehicle. How would that affect the fight to win this virus? Well, um, first of all, to be able to win any battle, any soldier will tell you that you don't need fifth columnists. You don't need fifth columnists. You don't need any Trojan horse. You need a united 
team that is behind you. If we now say we are fighting the coronavirus and a huge chunk of fighting this unseen virus is going to rely on the people trusting the messaging. The messaging is all, the, 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 the vast chunk of this fight has to do with the messaging. The people have to trust the messaging. If you are now all alone, these people do not like you. They don't trust you. No matter how much you do it, this is just democracy at play. It happened in 2014. No matter how much you are doing, if they don't like you, if they don't trust you, they're not going to believe your messaging. And that's the scenario we are having here. I do not listen to the gentleman called Adebayo. But a chunk of Sierra Leoneans listen to him. Now, you do not like Adebayo. You do not have to like Adebayo. But you can bring Adebayo on board. So it is not just an issue of the political parties. You have to find the influential voices, convince them, please, let us put aside whatever issue is between the two of us. For now, what is correct for this country, let us do it. So bring on board these voices that you don't like. Bring on board these politicians that you don't like. Bring everybody on board. Otherwise, all your important messaging are going to be diluted because those who they listen to are not telling them what should be told to them. Dr. Blyden, That's what I mean. Dr. Blyden, would Sierra Leoneans not challenge the fact that um, you are saying um, people who do not like the president or the current um, political party in power... Uh, and, and, and let me, let me add them. in here, not just like him. Yeah. They don't trust him. Okay. Trust. Trust. Very important. <laughs> trust is they the They did word. not... And it's, it's not just... This is democracy. It happens around the world. Hmm. President Trump, there are people who they don't like him, they detest him, they don't trust him. So he had to reach across the aisle and bring those who are trusted to help him out. That's what I am saying here. And, and that is why I want to come in And that is why I want to come in bring voices that, that are trusted to come in, by Dr. other Biden. segments of the society to be a Just, part of this battle. We had, we had people who were um, championing the fight against the Ebola um, virus in 2014, 2015. And when this um, virus was ravaging the globe, the, the president um, decided to invite some of those who were championing the fight. Is that not inclusiveness to ensure that um, those who had the, um, the knowledge to fight the virus, those who fought the, um, the Ebola virus in 2014, were brought on board to help share the expertise and experience to winning uh, um, this particular battle? Well, um, let me use this opportunity to commend uh, President Madabio for inviting those who had fought the Ebola pandemic. That was a tremendous show of statesmanship, but he fell short, and he has to accept he fell tremendously short. You don't invite the CEO, major retired Paulo Conte, and you don't invite the one who was supervising the CEO, who is your predecessor, former president, His Excellency Dr. Anes Bai Koroma. I can state it here authoritatively that President Koroma has made several phone calls to reach out to President Julius Madabio, and President Bio is not picking up the man's phone calls. I, I state this with authority ask, um, that President Anes Bai Koroma has president reached out, Anes and President Bai Anes Bai Koroma was the commander mm -hmm. of the fight against Ebola. Paulo Conte worked under President Koroma. If you look at the structure of the NAC, how the National Ebola Response Center was created, Paulo was number two. Number one was President Koroma. President Madabio needs to reach out and learn from President Koroma. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of things that President Koroma can teach to President Madabio about managing a pandemic. It doesn't take away from him being the Grand Commander of the Republic of Sierra Leone at this point in time. But he has to reach out to the commander of the fight against Ebola at that time, who was no lesser person than his predecessor, President Koroma. He has not done that. Instead, he reaches out to Palo Conte, who was number two in the battle. And, and that's where there's a lapse that we have to let Should the current president do. There Do is a lapse. Dr. Let him Biden. take the phone call of the former president when he calls him to discuss the coronavirus fight. Dr. Blyden. 
should should former president Ernest Baikroma not demonstrate an act of um, statesmanship by joining the fight without um, waiting on the invitation of um, President Julius Madabio because this is a national pandemic. And um, this I is somebody who has, I, I who has served as president just, of this country, who the people of this country you, are Mr. giving... Wise, I the, just yes. told you with authority hmm. that President Koma has made several phone calls. Former President Koma has made several phone calls so His Excellency the President Julius Madabio and President Madabio is rejecting the phone calls of the president, the former president. That, that, I just said that to you, and I said this with authority here. I said with authority that President Koma definitely wants to come on board. Who would not want to come on board? This is an existential threat to our nation. Who in God's name would not want to be a part of this fight? President Koma wants to be a fat part of this fight. And he's doing it, but he has to do it on a limited level in McKinney. But there is a lot he can teach to President Julius Madabio about managing an emergency during a pandemic. All right. Um, Dr. Blyden, stay there with us. Let me get a response from um, the mouthpiece of the government, uh, Mohamed Rahman Swari. Um, you've listened to what Dr. Blyden um, has said, and key amongst them has to do with inclusiveness. If we are to win this fight, we must be inclusive. Bring on board people who are willing to serve, people who've gotten the experience in the fight against Ebola and how they can use the experience. And of course, he has said authoritatively that even the former president, who was the commander-in-chief when Ebola struck this country, has been trying to reach out to the president the president is saying it is um, the president keeps um, shutting the door yeah i mean i mean um my sister sylvia is right in so far as she um, posits the need for a multi-partisan approach to the war against the coronavirus and like she has admitted his excellency has already demonstrated that leadership by bringing in um either the frontline ebola respondents to support the cause um you know how it all ended. The rest is history. I'm not going down there. So, um, but what she seems to be particularly concerned with is the fact that former President Kroma has not been invited. And that is why I think we have to um, be very exact and correct with our people, right? Um, back in the days of opposition, candidate Brigadier Rita Julius Madabu was um, um, a doctoral student in the University of Bradford. He had to abandon his studies in the UK at the risk of life and limb, flew into here to the consternation of all, you know, made appointments to a state house. He went there and pledged himself because he knew Sierra Leone was on trial. These were turbulent times for our country. While many were trying to run away, and many actually did, he flew in to stand by to support Sierra Leone, risking life and limb, right? He did not wait to be contacted. He was, he, he was never written a letter. I would like, I challenge everybody, show me that invitation. He was never invited. He took the initiative. He took, it on his, he took the owners to fly in here. And even when he came in here to work for the motherland, he was being, he was being castigated. He was being vilified that he had been given money. All of those things flew around. But being the gentleman he is, he, he decided that there was nothing, nothing so small to do for Sierra Leone. He went from quarantine center to quarantine center across the whole country, not only um, helping to raise awareness, but also um, doing humanitarian assistance in quarantine homes and across the country. He did that. So what Sylvia right? is saying... So that is something... Former President Kuma, yeah. so, so, what, so what Dr. Blyden is saying there, yes, um, when um, candidate Bio then came in, he was welcomed by the um, um, president then, um, Ernest by Kuma. But this time no, he's no, saying... No, 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 you are, you, are, you, are, no. You, are, you are paraphrasing her out of context. She, she, said, she will correct me. She said, yes. um, former President Kuma has not been invited. So yeah. I'm saying and he, he, of, he has been calling. Himself. No, I am saying to my sister there that that is not correct. President Bill is a quintessential gentleman. He does not, even with us, who serve him very directly, let alone to talk about a towering, former sta a, a, a towering state sponsor. He takes our calls. He responds to our text messages. If, for any reason, he gets a missed call from former President Kruma, I can guarantee you every breath in me that he will respond. He has not had that. Again, this is probably a national conversation. Um, somebody needs mm -hmm. to reach out to somebody, right, in the interest of... Um, winning the war the coronavirus against against coronavirus 
So that is that is that has to be laid out properly. Um, uh, my sister also noted that um, the war against Corona is being led by no medical doctors. Um, Doctor Alpha Uri, who incidentally is almost a medical doctor, he's a chemist, right? Um, of he's now a professor of no main repute, right? Um, so. I have checked out the, 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 the health minister in Ghana has a, B, a BSc in economics, an MBA. He is not even in the, in the sciences. Um, the health minister in Kenya um, also is, um, is BSc or something in insurance. So Uhuru Kenyatta, President Uhuru Kenyatta is not a medical doctor. But these are countries whose responses are doing very well. You know, the, the rest of the sub region and the world are admiring the way they are responding. So, you don't necessarily to be, need to be medical doctors to take your response to the next level. Even when there are no medical doctors, see how much, how long we were able to keep Corona out of our country. And now that it's here, see how, how much we've been able to nail it to the corner where it came from. Right? So, that is why we realize. You know, it is ultimately the healthcare providers who have to deliver, who have to put boots on the ground and deliver a victory for us. That is why President Bill is going, is bending over backwards to accommodate, right? They are very legitimate concerns, which I told you just a little while ago, it's being discussed in its advanced stages. And we, we have kept a line of communication open with those doctors. Um, on the issues, you know, I like to assure we want a bipartisan approach in defeating the coronavirus. This is why. Um, the Political Parties Registration Commission, whose business it is to regulate and manage political parties, um, last week summoned all of them. They have signed a joint communique acknowledging the clairvoyance um, leadership of His Excellency President Bill and pledging their support. Just last week, um, it was on Friday, the chairman of the PPRC, Political Parties Registration Commission, was in our office. We had very fruitful discussions with him with a view to bringing on board all political party leaders so that they can support. Um, the war against the coronavirus. Pres former President Krumah being chairman and leader of the APC, I'm sure once his commitment is made, that will be an, uh, uh, you know, an opportune moment for him to join this struggle. Uh, uh, something also key that you should, um, you should respond to has to do with the fact that, according to Dr. Blyden, mm. many Sierra Leoneans do not trust um, President Julius Madabiu. Mm. So the messages he is giving out will not be mm. adhered to because these people don't trust him. So how do you get these okay, people so who they trust to come on board so and support? You have been, this is not a very scientific poll. You have been running, um, you have been receiving calls from across the country. I have followed all radio stations virtually as part of a job description. Caller after caller is saying we are, our heart is in the right place. The president is taking the tough right measures to rid our country of the pandemic. Having said that, I understand um, Sylvia's understanding of not liking somebody is when they don't vote for you. You might well vote against your friend, right? Not because you don't like him. So those who voted, who did not vote for President Bill when he contested last time, you know, does not mean they don't like him, right? You watch out. When would have won, or would have defeated coronavirus? When the when all of the other projects would have taken off ground, that is why you would know how many people who did not vote for him in the first instance will be gravitating towards um, give him a second term on the first ballot. But, but again, how do we craft um, messages around sensitization mm. and calling on people to uh, abide to the rules, uh, mm. the precautionary rules, and now the containment rules? I can't get that. Could you, could you come again? How do we craft messages? I mean the government. Okay. How does the government craft messages to get people to adhere to the containment rules of the virus right Well, now? so we clearly understand, um, you know, we have various publics we are dealing with. Mm. In a situation like this, we clearly have to segment our messages, right? When I, you know, a couple of weeks, two weeks ago I was in my village, uh, that was clearly a different audience than I have here, mm. yeah? I was speaking the, no, the local language that they clearly understand. Mm -hmm. You must have mm -hmm. seen the video. Yeah. yeah, so we clearly segment our messages. When we're working with the telcos, for example, if you are in the north, there are predominant languages they speak there. You know, they call, they ring back tone. You know, once you, once you call, that's the ring back. You get the ring back tone in the language of that region. If in a few seconds you don't pick it, it will, it will, it will come to you. That's what we've done. So we clearly know how to target and segment the audience. But like, like we have always emphasized, this is not a government of Sierra Leone problem alone. This is a threat of national annihilation. This is an existential threat, right? 
I mean, corona is humbling and decimating, you know, the most advanced and resilient healthcare systems. So that is why we say we have to stand together, speak together, and fight this good fight together. Like right. His Excellency always says, we, defeat, we fought and defeated Ebola together. We have defeated natural disasters. We will defeat corona again if we stand together. So I'm calling on all to join us in this right and proper fight to ensure that our country is not ravaged. Let us not keep waiting for invitations. I mean, the invitations are already here. Because when corona, may the Lord forbid, if corona goes on the rampage, it's not going to pick who was invited, who was not invited, who comes from where. It does not know status, it does not know political parties, it does not know regions. So I'd like to use this opportunity to call on all and sundry to rally around His Excellency President Bill's clarion call for Sierra Leoneans to stand together and defeat this coronavirus. All right, um, Dr. Dr. Blyden, let's, let's talk about um, what should be done. You've highlighted a couple of challenges. Now, how do we surmount those challenges if we um, want to win this, the fight against this coronavirus? Okay, good. Check Dr. Blyden, are you there with us? Okay. Um, let me just run through a few messages when Dr. Blyden is there. Then we'll... Okay. Dr. Blyden. Hello. Yes. I'm here. I'm here. We're getting, okay, we're getting you loud and clear. Now, I, I was asking, you've highlighted some of the challenges. What would you prefer as recommendations to surmounting these challenges and let us win um, this fight as a nation? Well, uh, I would like to clarify some points very quickly. Go ahead. Um, first point is that when President Madabio, as then the strongest opposition voice, was invited by President Kuruma all the way from London, and he came in, the very next morning, he came in the night, the very next morning, President Kuruma hosted him at State House. I was then working at State House as Special Executive Assistant to the President. I met the current President at the door of State House. I gave him a hug and I said to him, thank you, brother, for joining this fight. Even though everybody knows I am one of the biggest critics of current President. But I put that one aside and I hugged him at the, end, the doorway of State House before he went up to meet my boss at State House. Now, I repeat that we are not talking politics here. We are talking influential voices. President, former President Koroma is a very influential voice. Whether or not he is the chairman and leader of the APC or not, he remains an influential voice. Secondly, he also led, he led, I repeat, it wasn't Palo Conte who led it, it was President Koroma who led the fight against Ebola. And he was also the head of state, sitting where President, Ko, President Madabio is now seated. There is a lot that President Madabio can learn from President Koma. And I want to assure my brother in the studio that I am not lying here. I'm saying it with authority. In fact, one of the few times that President Koma has got upset with me recently was when I was arguing with him that, is it possible that you have called President Bio and he received so many phone calls that your number disappeared from his phone. And then he demonstrated to me that indeed he has been calling. And that's why I'm saying it, that it is with authority that I am saying it here live on the TV, that the former president has been reaching out to the current president several times to discuss how he can help in the Ebola and them to, to, to stop the Ebola uh, fight. And his calls have been snubbed. This is with authority. Secondly, I'm not talking about liking. I'm talking about trust. You see, my brother there is one of the best, was one of our best journalists before, and he knows that journalism is all about trust. Messaging is all about trust. If you do not trust the person who is talking to you, you are going to believe these stories about when they say, oh, there is a 5G, there is no corona, it is a 5G uh, 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 um, communication network that they are setting up. It is all a matter of trust. If you do not trust the person, it doesn't mean you don't like the person. You can like the person, but you don't trust the person's messaging. 
So you have to now bring in everybody who you know can be trusted by a chunk of the society to come on board. That's what that's my messaging. Then finally, please, 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 Honorable Radu, there is no such thing as almost a medical doctor. No such thing. You're either a medical doctor, like Dr. Sylvia Olenka Blyden is a medical doctor, or you are not a medical doctor. Dr. Alpha who lectured me in medical school. He lectured me chemistry. He's a chemist, full stop. What we have here is a medical emergency. It's not just Ministry of Health Management issues. There should be somebody with a medical background in this mix. What I am seeing now, the head of state, the head of the Ebola response, and the Minister of Health, none of them are medical people. And so that's why we are having a lot of these blunders that they are making. For example, why are they hiding the identities of patients of coronavirus? It, it's, it's, it's unconscionable, it's unforgivable. Because by hiding the identities of corona patients, you are hindering yourself. You are making it impossible to do proper contact tracing. Because some of these people, they will not remember all of who and whom they recently contacted. But if you announce the names and who they are, it helps for the community to bring forward names. For example, if someone else be frank here, somebody could be a married man and he has a girlfriend somewhere, he doesn't want to state that girlfriend's name. But the, girlfriend's would, the girlfriend would know, or someone connected to the girlfriend would know, who would now mention that name and help the contact tracing process. Why are they hiding the identities of these people? They are hindering us in this battle. We need to know who are these people, where are they, and let me use this opportunity, please, Samuel, to ask the Minister of Information. They have to treat some of us like, we are intelligent people. They put out an information that there are six corona patients, but only five are being treated. Where is the one person? Can he please tell this nation who is that one person? And why is that one person not being treated? It's critical. This is a question on behalf of the people of Sierra Leone because we are worried. We don't know who these people are. Could be my next door neighbor. I don't know. So they need to be more open to us. They need to be more transparent with us. These are critical points. Now, the last thing I want to point out here is this aspect, I mean, in reaction to my brother in the studio, is this aspect of saying we won't call on someone to come. You have to come. No, no, I, I, I don't think you are doing the correct thing. People, I, for example, I did not even know where the EOC center is. I'm a medical doctor. I did not even know where the EOC center is. You can imagine ordinary people. You are telling them, oh, we are not going to invite you. Come on board. You have to reach out. Please, SLPP-led government, reach out and let us fight this battle together. That would be my point. Any All right. other question, Dr. Blyden, before, before letting you go, are, are there names you... Um, no, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going. I'm not okay. going, I'm here. We're here for two hours. I'm okay. definitely not okay. going. I'm just, just saying okay. just before this we was let the reaction rest. to the point. Now before we let you rest, we'll definitely come board. back to you. I'm not going, I'm here. Okay, are there names already in terms of those who you think um, should, have been, should have been called upon to um, lead the fight against this virus? No, I think we have a wonderful leader now in the, pers in the person of His Excellency, Dr. Julius Madabio. I cannot fault him in terms of leading this battle. He has been leading the battle well, so I'm not going to say we need someone else to lead. He is doing an amazing job leading, but he is shortchanging the battle by not bringing more people on board and by refusing to pick up the phone, of his a phone call of his predecessor. So to say I want another leader, no. I like my leader, I like my president. Let him continue doing the job that he's doing for us. He has been doing a fantastic job, as limited as he is, that he's not, an, he's not medical, not medically inclined. I don't believe he has an iota of knowledge of medicine, or he has been doing well, but he has to bring more people on board. And he seriously has to consider that the, whoever is the coordinator, if I was the president of Sierra Leone, my instant choice would have been Brigadier General for this. I would not even think, I would not even blink. 
he would have instantly be put in charge of this um, fighting the corona response. It would not have been Kelly Ponte, no way. I would have brought in Brigadier Safode or any of the other professional doctors, but Safode particularly because he's a virologist. He's a virology medical doctor. So I think he needs to bring the medical people on board. I'm a medical doctor. I'm a member of the SLMDA. I speak to my colleagues. They are not happy. They are not happy. There is so much being done that should not be done. There is so much that needs to be done that has not yet been done. And what are those things? There needs to be a medical leadership in this fight. There is no medical leadership in this fight, I'm sorry to say. There needs to be a medical perspective at the top hierarchy of this fight. The president needs to consider that. Yes, Dr. Wuri lectured me, he was one of my best lecturers, very good in chemistry. That's it, chemistry. Brigadier Kelly Conte is good at fighting wars, so there's yes. But for God's sake, bring on board a medical doctor to help you. All right. Uh, um, that, 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 that's a very good call. Yeah, so uh, let, me, let yes. me just start, you know. I mean, that's her opinion. If she were president, again, hypothetical, who she would have chosen to lead the fight. I can't fault her for that. No contention. So I will only say um, she probably has not remember that there are two deputy ministers in the Ministry of Health, both of them are medical doctors, right? Two deputy ministers. So at the very apex of the response in the Ministry of Health are medical doctors, right? And Brigadier Fodisa that she just mentioned is leading one of the most critical pillars in all of this. So yes, we are leveraging all of those experiences, all of those insights, all of those professional years of experience. Right, so just to let, let viewers and listeners understand that. Um, so <clears throat> we, we no doubt agree, like I have said, this is um, a war that we must fight and we must win together as Sierra Leoneans. You see His Excellency has already started going across the aisle. He's called on other leaders with prior experience to join him, right? So the door is not closed. Right? Because we have just started fighting this war. We hope we're able to contain it where it is now. So the door still, there's still a window of opportunity for all salient stakeholders to play a part. Nobody can doubt the fact that former President Kruma um, is, is a towering Sierra Leonean figure. He has his appeal in, in the places where they listen to him. I mean, that is a fact, right? So, like I have mentioned in the beginning, he's welcome to join the fight, right? Because this is a Sierra Leonean fight. In fact, for a former leader, part of your legacy should be to see that country continue to thrive from strength to strength, right? So it should be a filial obligation on him to play his part to keep this country together, right? Mm. Whether in peace, in war, in sickness, in what have you. So that's, that's something. Um, but I'm sure President Bioto is listening <laughs> and watching. Um, so so um, about the identities of... Um, yes of, of um, corona patients. Well, I have seen, I, I have to commend a few people, um, particularly patient number two. She was um, very courageous, bold enough um, to speak out, particularly in a society where stigmatization is the order of the day. She braved it and spoke out. So that was her own, you know, consent. She did it and it's been updating uh, the whole country of her health situation. I doff my heart to her. Um, I think um, she's a medical doctor. I'm not going to pretend to be one before I get corrected that you can, there are no half medical doctors. You're either a medical doctor or not, right? Um, is it called the Hippocratic Oath? I, I'm sure patient confidentiality is one of those ethical things you do in, 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 in medical school. Again, I am quite willing and ready for some schooling on this. But I know everywhere in the West, you see, when, people, when patients contract um, the coronavirus, they themselves go public. I have today contracted the coronavirus. I have this, I have that, right? The public follows them because stigma is not an issue in those communities, in those contexts. But in a place like this, right? I remember when unprofessionally somebody um, leaked the medical records of somebody in Bo, right? Remember mm. one of the first hoaxes yes. that came on um, that the test was being conducted in Kenya. People went and surrounded her family home. That family's life was in danger, simply because they had, they had published her, 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 her particulars. So in societies like this, there has to be a, de a delicate balance between uh, full disclosure 
and taking other considerations in on board. So, 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 so how, how would you address that, for example? Because what Dr. Blyden is saying, if we don't reveal the identities of these um, patients, it will undermine the fight and transmission will go away because nobody knows who, um, who the patient is and who they've um, contacted before um, the, the cases are. Well, this is a debate that can go on till the cows come home. Mm. I mean, she has some points from, from her perspective, but I also know that this is a very revengeful society. Mm. You put out the names of people out there, you know, the neighbors might be the first to lynch, to lynch that person, even before, the, even before the joint security deployments are done there. So we have quite, we are between the rock and the hard place. Quite difficult. I mean, this is a debate that should go on. I mean, you can't dismiss her, 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 her case. She has quite some fun, fundamental issues there. But I also know this is a, venge, a, a very revengeful society. This is um, also um, a society that tries on stigmatizing other people. So we, we, we quite have our job cut out for us. It's a tough call to make. Let, let, let's talk about the, another critical issue she raised, the issue of um, government announcing five, um, sorry, six patients and government is treating five. Well, Who is treating the order and where is the order? Unfortunately, she attributed those statements to me. I have never been on record as saying that. I just said we have six confirmed corona cases in the country, right? I have never, ever spoken about five being at, uh, to the, As I sit here, I know six corona patients are receiving treatment. I don't know anything short of that. So you, I'm sure you attributed it to the wrong person, not to me. Maybe for the purpose of clarity, um, the news was out that um, one of the six patients mm -hmm. is uh, being um, treated by an embassy um, because um, he's a, he, the, 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 patient, the patient is a foreign national. How true is that? I can neither confirm nor deny. I'm not aware in this fight. This is an integrated fight that is led by the government of Sierra Leone. I know when we started off early days, um, there was provision for quarantine facilities by embassies or trusted organizations. The Ministry of Health uh, in those instances went to do an assessment visit. Um, there, was, there, was, there was a checklist. If you ticked all those boxes, you were allowed to self-quarantine, right? With, with MOH officials doing daily um, symptom monitoring and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure, and this is news, that some embassy is treating somebody. Last time I checked, the government of Sierra Leone was leading this response, and I know that is still the case. You know, so I'm learning this here and now. That's why I said I can neither confirm nor deny. But I'm most inclined to believe that it is not true. All right. Um, le let me just take the, um, this message from Saidu Swari. Um, Saidu Swari is saying, breaking the chain of transmission cannot be totally achieved. We think 72 hours. There is need to extend the lockdown to achieve um, that objective. It goes with a lot of consequences, but it will rather be good we rest in our houses than we rest in peace. Dr. Blyden, what's your take on the lockdown? Um, I don't know if you are seeing, if you are seeing the screen right now. Yeah. I assume you are seeing the screen right now. We and are. what you have on the screen is the COVID-19 surveillance update for 6 April. Let me turn the screen. Let me turn it so that... You can see it well. And right there, you can see six cases, five confirmed cases now at the treatment center. This is authoritative government document, six cumulative confirmed, five confirmed cases now at the treatment center. Where is the one? This is a government document I am beaming on the screen. Six cumulative confirmed cases, five at the treatment center. Please, can the minister tell the people of Sierra Leone, where is the one more case? Where is the one more case? We need to know, where is that person? It is important, even if you are hiding, the identity of your, the patients, and believe you me, let me alert this government, the people of Sierra Leone are going to blame you for hiding the identity of those cases, and let me tell you why they are going to blame you. In the initial stage of any corona outbreak, that's the best time to stop it. And the only way you stop it is through contact tracing. If you are now in the initial stage, you are hiding 
the identities of these cases on excuses that will not hold water, as we say, by saying that they will chase their relatives, they will be vindictive. That's a, even that is a failure of governance. For you to even say that you cannot protect citizens is a failure of governance. For you to expose the wider populace to people who might be carrying the virus without us knowing. For example, the National Emergency Medical Services. I am now asking the Minister of Information to confirm to Sierra Leoneans whether the National Emergency Medical Services that runs our ambulance services, whether the names, anyone at that place has been confirmed positive of corona. And if indeed the National Ambulance Services reportedly the head of such a key national agency is infected with coronavirus, why are you hiding it from the people of Sierra Leone to know that the person who is in charge of the ambulance services is infected and that in fact he imported the infection to Sierra Leone? Secondly, the people of Sierra Leone are not going to forgive you if you allow undetected transmission that they later prove could have been stopped. What do I mean? I'm talking about asymptomatic carriers. Yesterday, the American ambassador put out an audio where she's saying that the Trump administration is now advising everybody to put on masks. I refuse to go to the AYV studio today, one of my favorite studios, because I don't want to catch coronavirus from the air. So that is how serious it is. You have asymptomatic carriers. These are people who have caught the virus. Their immune system is strong enough to defeat the virus. But before it's defeated the virus, they had infected other people. Now, this government is going to be blamed for not taking care of asymptomatic carriers of coronavirus. And worst of all, the way you are hiding the identity of these people, creating so much speculations. It is even more dangerous than announcing their names. Why do I say that? If you are allowing speculations, people are going to start speculating address number A or identity number B, and the same risk is always going to be there. Innocent people who have never caught coronavirus are now going to be stigmatized because the government did not identify those who actually caught coronavirus. So please, this government needs to rethink that policy. And let me also use the opportunity to inform the minister and government spokesman about the law in Sierra Leone. I mean, I don't care about what happens in America or in England. I'm speaking about what happens here in Sierra Leone. What does the law say? We have a law here. It's the Public Health Ordinance Act Number 23 of 1960. Mm -hmm. It is very clear in that law that the government is mandated. You are, you are, let me say it today. You as the government, you are mandated to tell us the community, anybody with an infectious contagious disease like coronavirus, because it is a notifiable disease, it is a reportable disease, and when you're hiding it, you are breaking the law. Public Health Ordinance Act number 23 of 1960, if you go, for example, to section 52 of that act, it tells you if a landlord of a notify of a tenant who has a notifiable disease attempts to rent out that premises, let's say the tenant dies or the tenant moves away from that premises, that landlord should not rent out that premise to another tenant unless he disinfects the house first. Now, here's the interesting part. If he does not disinfect the house, he commits a crime. How would he know he commits a crime if the authorities have not told him? So you see where your government is failing us? You see where you are letting us down by hiding identities? Let's take, for example, case number four. In all the government documents that I have seen, both as a medical doctor and as a journalist. Case number four's identity is being shielded. Who is case number four, for God's sake? We need to know. If we don't know, we speculate. And when we speculate, danger comes in. 
And when danger comes in, then you have situations where people now take the law into their hands. For God's sake, you are letting us down. You are exposing us to this virus by hiding the identities of these people for whatever reason on earth. Who is case number four? Why are you hiding case number four? So much so that even in your EOC meetings, case number four is not known other than to mark that case number four has 17 contacts. Who is case number four with 17 contacts? We need to know. Who is case number one, number two, we know. Three, four, five, six, we need to know. And we also need to know, please, whether the head of the ambulance services, an Italian national emergency medical services running our ambulance services, we need to know whether he is confirmed positive of the virus. All right. Be honest, the be upfront, be open, and save this country. Okay. Hiding Do Dr. Blyden, identity let's, let's, let's is not allow saving this country. Let's allow the, the minister to respond to um, those issues you've raised. Yeah, so Dr. Blyden, thank you so very much. You have raised very fundamental issues. Um, some of them quite startling revelations for me. I'm shell-shocked at hearing them from you. Um, you will be quite a very valuable asset in the surveillance and contact tracing team. As a Sierra Leonean who's always stood up for this country in material moments like this, um, you most um, honestly welcome. I can arrange a meeting with you with the EOC team members so that you can share some of those insights you have. I mean, this is a war we are into. The enemy lurking out there is an invisible enemy. Um, with people like you who have other eyes that ordinary eyes can't see, we welcome those insights, you know. So at this point, I don't know as much as you do, but we are quite happy to debrief you so that it can help our, our surveillance and contact tracing arrangement. Thank you so very much. I know you will graciously take me up on my offer. Um, so you're talking about some people who go, who go around um, asymptomatic, who might have been in very compromising situations in recent times, right? I have seen some of your writings on Facebook, on social media. You have raised those issues, and I think, I mean, if those people are in positions of trust and leadership, the best gift they can give Sierra Leoneans is to come forward themselves and get tested, just in case they are asymptomatic, um, so that they can spare this country any kind of thing. I mean, your writings are in the public domain. Everybody knows your concerns around that. I could not agree more, right? Um, on other matters, you know, this is a war we must fight and win. Government has no interest, no interest whatsoever in hiding and concealing the identities of anybody. Because, I mean, this is not something you go to buy in a shop. If you want to buy, for example, you know, a brand new car, that's a private decision you have taken, right? We can hold you accountable for it. But if you get infected in the cause of public service or unsuspectingly, nobody should hold you accountable. So there is no point concealing the identities of anybody. So... Government is not, will not. We just have the other consideration like, considerations like I just mentioned. Um, even though you still note it as a tragic failure of leadership. Well, this is a country we inherited, a country um, where law and order has literally broken down. We're trying to build it up layer by layer, brick by brick. You know, that's the problem. But I say... That's true, Mr. Like, Mr. Minister, I am sorry, that is not true. You did I not inherit a country where law so and you, order have order. Your you inherited a country that was the most peaceful country in West Africa yeah, and the third most ever, peaceful country in Africa and more peaceful to play by the rules than America and way. England. That's the rating. Please, let's get our facts correctly, please. Yes. I, let me repeat. You know, law and order does not break down overnight. Right? You don't sleepwalk into breaking down of law and two order. Years. Two years of breaking down of law and order. Two years. No, two no, years. no, 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 no. But come on, Sylvia, let us, let us focus on the, on the key issues, Dr. Blyden. No, I'm just you correcting I you. I don't well. want you to you just get away with well. saying you inherited you a country that was well. no law and but order. I just want to come in and just correct that place quickly. Okay. Then you can uh, move uh, on. Let's just agree well, that I mean, so we are the most peaceful. You inherited one that was the most peaceful in West Africa. I mean, lawlessness was the defining hallmark of this country in the last 11 years. But we are not here. So, exactly. So let, let, me, let, let me come in. Let me, co let, let me come in on that, so um, Dr. Dr. Blyden. Let, 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 let me come in. Rally the country together. I just so wanted that, to correct so him. That's all. It's all right. I just wanted to get that part corrected. And become the envy of the whole world. I mean, I can't allow that to, to, to go on. on okay. I'm not going to allow you to. Okay. I'm not going to allow you to. Dr. Dr. Blyden and Mr. Minister. Okay. 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 For our law and law and order. That is that is that is made clear. Of course, you've um you've you've done um your own comments to his um his statements. So now. Now, what is critical has to do now with um, 
Dr. Blyden is saying the head of the ambulance services, it, um, there are rumors that um, the head is infected with the virus. Yeah, and but that is, so it's this key. is quite an insightful revelation just coming from her. Mm -hmm. um, as a patriotic Sierra Leonean, I, I'm asking her to kindly support us, right, with surveillance and contact tracing. She seems to know so much more than even some members of the EOC. So I'm inviting her I'm in public. Of, I know I'm one of the best investigative office. journalists in Sierra Leone. Don't forget, my brother. Don't well, forget. Well, so my dear sister, <laughs> this is why you must put that to national service one more time, right? So after <laughs> here, we can have a conversation. And Brigadier Rita Kelly Conte will be more than pleased, will be more than happy to support, uh, to listen to you and to work with you on contact tracing, surveillance, and, you know, drink from your well of experience as a medical doctor as well. Dr. So Blyden, is that, is, is, is that invite accepted? I'm sorry? Is the invitation accepted? What invitation? The invitation for you to come on board and um, help the EOC with the experience and the things you've gathered so far. According to the minister, they will really help in this fight. And he's well, inviting well, well, you. The, 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 you see, the, the problem that I have is my, my table is so tight right now. But believe you me, in terms of supporting the national fight against um, uh, Corona, I can do whatever I, I can. But um, let me also give him some more information that he might not be okay with. The EOC, he wants me to um, attend. Two, two information. First, as you would know, uh, a media group I am aligned with that is called the C Media Group, mm. when the government delayed to announce that we had two additional cases, the C Media Group broke the news ahead of the government. And what happened? The EOC held a meeting and they threatened the laboratory technicians that they were speaking to Dr. Blyden. And because of they were speaking to Dr. How did Dr. Blyden know? So they threatened them with grave consequences. And it wasn't even the technicians who told me. I have my sources. I'm an investigative journalist. I know how to get information. So those poor technicians, the EOC has threatened them for speaking to me. I would only work with an ES EOC that is transparent, an EOC that is not putting this government at risk. And that's why I am appealing on behalf of the people of this country for the EOC to be transparent. Don't hide things. You were, they were hiding the two extra cases until the C Media Group announced that there are two extra cases. And now they are threatening the technicians that they spoke to me I don't even know those technicians. Poor people are being threatened now that they will face grave consequences and even threatened with jail because they, they allowed the news to leak, according to them. Secondly, okay, so that EOC, let me also inform the minister that the information I have is that every single member of that EOC needs to go under isolation now because one of them, at least on April 1st, 2020 was infected, confirmed to be infected. I will not call the person's name. Confirmed to be infected and possibly has infected everybody in that EOC, including possibly Brigadier Kelly Conte. So I am not going to meet that particular EOC just like that. I might meet them maybe by video conferencing until such time as they are tested and proven that they have not caught the virus from that particular person. But please, Mr. Minister, make it a policy under the Public Health Ordinance Act No. 23 of 1960. It is mandatory on you. Go back to the EOC and tell them to release the identities of these six patients so that we can start to know who they are and who their contacts are. Okay. And secondly, all those people who were in self-isolation, of course, I've written about one who is the most prominent of all, who is the mayor of Freetown. The mayor of Freetown has shown unethical leadership by refusing to test herself after self-isolation. She and all those who were coming from overseas, with the information from the Trump administration that 25% of infected patients are infected without knowing that they are infected, I think she has to do the ethical thing go get herself tested. And even if the virus has cleared from her system, because me, as far as I'm concerned, she met the prince, and within nine days, the prince was infected with coronavirus. And she was in the panel with him, Prince Albert of Monaco. So as far as I'm concerned, she's exposed. 
until such time that I can be convinced that she's not exposed. She needs to go test herself. This is just basic ethical leadership. But I cannot really blame the mayor alone. It's the government, the central government, that is letting all of us down by not doing the correct things and intimidating laboratory technicians who don't even know severe blindness and say they gave me the information All right. because they are hiding. Thank government you. is not so, transparent. The government is hiding. Thank you. So, government needs... Thank you, thank you, Doc. Let, let, let's um, just quickly let the minister just respond yeah. as we so, as we Sylvia round up. Sylvia some a member of the EOC was tested positive on April one. This is national service. Um, he started naming names. Um, government has absolutely no interest in concealing, um, um, you know, um, infections. Right? We might not put names to it as long as we are able to reach out to you, make yourself available, and put you to the routine medical treatment. That is our interest. Our interest is not to name and shame, right? I mean, that's the whole point. So if you have vital information, you don't necessarily have to be in the same room with EOC members. Feel gracious enough, feel compelled and obliged to do that by video link, by virtually you could do that. I mean, that would still be very helpful, right? So I am not aware that any lab technician has been threatened. But the fact of the matter is, yeah, nobody yeah, keeps yeah, this yeah. information secret. I mean, it's on our owners as government, I would say we have to re regularly brief Sierra Leoneans, right? But more often than not, like in the Bowl case, remember? In mm -hmm. the Bowl case, somebody had posted out um, a lady's yes, phone number, all her particulars that she had tested positive, right? That was premature ejaculation, if you like. Nothing had happened by then. It had not gone through any routine checks. Well, you know? So yeah. that is why they insist for the most part that you have to allow due process, they triangulate the checks so that, you know, it's authenticated after one lab to the other and the other before it's finally pronounced, right? When you do it prior to those tests, there's a tendency you might, you might bring out false positives or false negatives. That is the only reason that government, that's the only interest that government might have in this. But government has no interest in suppressing the facts because this is the oxygen on which a successful COVID-19 fight is going to be best. And there is no way we will negate that. We will remain honest, we will remain sincere, we will remain you. committed and diligent to this fight. All right. It's one. So, so, so Dr. Blyden, as, as we round up this, um, this interview, what's the way forward for us as a nation to be able to defeat this virus? Well, on my own part, I know I also have influence and I have people who listen to me. I am doing my best to reach out to those who believe in me that we have to believe President Bio, we have to support President Bio. And I know when President Bio announced his state of emergency, I came out very boldly and very strongly to tell everybody who believes in me. I went on Facebook and I said, if you believe in me, if you trust me, trust our president, support our president at this point in time. If I can do that, it shows the seriousness of what is coming. And um, I would now want to make some few pointers, which I hope my brother would um, probably take some jottings down. You see, the three-day lockdown, I, I'm happy that he said it's a dress rehearsal, because the only way we can stop this virus are through lockdowns. I am extremely happy that, for now, we only have these six. But if you look at how this virus has been behaving, it has been behaving like, you know, uh, 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 those of us who read books on war, warfare, this virus, one of my very good friends, uh, retired Colonel Bash Conte, was telling me the other day that this virus is like a wonderful field marshal. He's a wonderful battle commander, this virus. What this virus does is it comes into the, into the community and then it goes into what is called a law, you know, like the guerrilla warfare. They go and they spread all over, and then they stay silent. And when they are strongly mobilized now, they pop out in a way where pop out from here, pop out from here, pop out from, from different places, you can no longer control them. And that is the fear I have right now. We are in the calm before the storm. The fact that we have community transmission because some of the cases are imported. But apart from the ones that were imported, 
the female medical doctor who I want to use this opportunity for, to highly commend, she, that lady is a hero. She should be given a national honor Agreed. for swiftly identifying that she could be infected, even though she had no... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think um, we're struggling there with the sound, so um, I'm afraid we have to um, say thank you to um, Dr. Sylvia Lenka Blyden for um, being there with us. We are also trying to reach out to um, the mayor of the Freetown City Council, Yvonne Akisoya, <laughs> to actually respond to... Um, the comment made by Dr. Sylvia Olainka Blyden. So, um, Mr. Minister, you've listened to um, C um, Dr. Blyden. And of course, um, some things are definitely um, serious, the things that she highlighted. So, how do we take it up from here? Well, um, I mean, she has underscored the need for a bi or multi partisan approach to this fight. That is something that His Excellency had already initiated. We will be deepening that in coming days and weeks. Like I mentioned, we are in advanced stages of discussions with the Political Parties Registration Commission to bring all political parties leaders together so that we can have additional boots on the ground. We realize and recognize the fact that many of them uh, are hugely influential in, their, in particular constituencies. So we hope all of them will add their influence to you know, the, message of, um, the message that we are currently rolling out across the country to help defeat corona. I also note um, the need for, but this is, this is a debate that will go on for a long time to come, um, to publish the identities of people who, who test positive. I mean, there are merits in her case, but there are also fundamental challenges, other concerns around confidentiality, around stigmatization, around mob justice, and all of those things. But again, this is a debate that should progress, that should continue until why but government clearly is between you know, a rock and a hard place when it comes to a situation like that. So until then, we are sticking with what we are doing. I just like to assure every Sierra Leonean watching or listening to me that this fight will continue to fire on all our cylinders, we will continue to keep it honest, we will continue to be sincere with Sierra Leonean, we will continue to show our on, on, on rival commitment to this fight. It is for this reason that his, press, his Excellency, even following the submission of the Commissions of Inquiry report, he has made it clear that the lives of Sierra Leoneans are a lot more important to him than, than, than foreseeing Commission recommendations, which does not in any way mean that the Commissions will be relegated to background, but this is what has the urgency of now, and he's devoting every energy, every focus, and all his time and attention to fighting the coronavirus to you know, to, to, to the end. Um, Sylvia mentioned the, 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 the virus behaves like a field marshal, a military person. <laughs> well, that is why we have President Bill, um, a former uh, military general himself. So he will lead this battle to a successful conclusion. Right. He will lead it to a successful conclusion. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Mohamed Rahman Sorry, Serious Minister of Information and Communication. Um, I will de uh, definitely Wise, allow I'm, Dr. I'm Blyden right to, to round up because right here, here you are saying a few words. But well, go, I also have to round up. <laughs> go ahead, Dr. Blyden. Um, I will allow you to round up. Hello? Yes, go ahead, Dr. Blyden. Yes, I don't know what happened. The line went off. I could not hear anything. Um, I don't know. Are we wrapping up can I, now? Can I, repeat, yes. can I repeat what I said? Yes, we are rounding up. The minister has given his part in short, so we are allowing you to give yours. We are rounding up. She didn't get me, so I, okay. I, I'm quite happy to. Okay. But, yes. but basically, what, what I am saying, what I was saying before the line, I, can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. What I am saying is that I am happy that the minister said this is a dress rehearsal. Because the only way for us to end the spread of Ebola anywhere in the world is for people to stay away from each other until a cure is found, until a solution that is a treatment is found for this virus. And if we do not do that in Sierra Leone, what is going to happen tomorrow, for example, everybody goes back to status quo, that is, life goes on normally, the judiciary opens, the parliament opens, the executive arm of government opens, 
and everybody mixes with one another again. Now, there is already community transmission of this virus. Mm -hmm. So it means there are people out there mm -hmm. now who are either asymptomatic or they are symptomatic with the virus without knowing that it is the virus that is affecting them. They might think it is just malaria. And so they could be infecting other people. So when we open up after three days lockdown, when we open up the system again, we have not achieved anything. We're still going to have asymptomatic carriers out there. And we are still going to have people who are infecting other people without them knowing that they are infecting other people. So what have we achieved out of these three days other than what the minister says is a dress rehearsal? Hopefully, I hope he means it. Because the only way we can stop this virus is by staying at home for as long as possible. And if we do not stay at home and we allow the virus to progress naturally as it, as it progresses in other places, then we are going to overwhelm the healthcare services. And when we overwhelm the healthcare services, that's it. Uh, it's going to be an unbelievable oh. time for Sierra Leone. Oh. Oh. If you look right. at what is happening in America, in Italy, in Spain, these are countries with advanced medical systems. They cannot cope. Okay. So I think if this is a dress rehearsal, fine. I lot the people of Sierra Leone to know that it's either they are they choose between one of two things. Because a lot of people are saying they're hungry, they're hungry, they don't know where they will get food. They either choose being hungry or they choose we all are exposed to this program. The healthcare services collapses because that is what is going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. The healthcare services are going to collapse if we do not stay home, if we do not do further lockdowns and slow this virus down. All so right. these are critical points that this government, you are the government, you are now in charge. You have to take a decision now. We have asymptomatic carriers out there. That's why the Americans are telling us to put on masks on our faces. It is serious. So we have to take a decision now, and it has to be a critical decision. That would be my parting message. Thank you very okay. much, Dr. Sylvia Olenka Blyden, for being part of the conversation. Thank you very much. I know you, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to respond. Yeah, just I mean, few, I mean um, she's, she's made fundamental points. Um, I've had this call um, severally. Um, I'm aware. I mentioned dress rehearsal in the context of doing the first scenario. During the first scenario, we did not have an incidence here. Um, we wanted to keep the virus out of here, right? That was dress rehearsal. Now we have the rare play enacted, right? So that is why we are able to do the things we are doing. Again, let me repeat, we do not have any interest in concealing any information that is of pertinence to members of the public. We will and will ensure that we make it known to the public each and every time we have a new positive case. Okay. As to the identity, that is a debate that will go on. This is a message you just sent. Others have also sent the same message that they need a longer lockdown. But this lockdown ends tonight, 11.59. And, you know, I will convey your message. You know, the other messages from the Sierra Leone Medical and Dental Association and others have all been conveyed. So let us see. This president will take the best decision at the appropriate time. Thank you. Right, before it gets late. We want to defeat Thank food, you very much. And we'll see all of us who can. Thank you that. very much, Mohamed Roman Suare, Minister of Information and Communications. Thank you very much, Dr. Sylvia Olenka Blyden. It's been a pleasure talking to um to all um two of you, um a gentleman and a lady. And um we'll now take a, a, a trip down to Bo and join our um bureau chief George Philip Jambawai. And when we come back, we'll try to um reach out to the mayor or um uh, of mm -hmm. the Freetown Municipality to respond to the comment of Dr. Sylvia Olenka Blyden. I am George Philip Jamawai. I am standing here right at both Ayama Highway. This is Total and Havana Nightclub. These are the two most popular nightclubs in the country's second capital. This place is celebrated because it attracts young men and women, particularly on Sundays and Wednesdays. Thousands of youth do come here. Commercial sex workers in the large number have always been here. Men from different parts of the country do come here to trade sex with commercial sex workers. Today, the place is empty. I will take you to some of the places where they have been and where men do get them. 
in normal times this emptiness you are seeing in normal times when you come here you see a lot of young girls some above 18 and some below 18 years commercial sex workers i mean today there is only emptiness they are not here we used to hear music from these two places they are all dead as of now because of the lockdown